Have you heard of Ermensoul before? What the hell is an Ermensoul? Is that the Dendro Ermensoul? Archon is known as the God of Wisdom because her consciousness is directly connected to it. To the people of Sumeru, she's not only a symbol of wisdom, but also of power and kindness. Unfortunately, she disappeared in a great calamity a few hundred years ago. Spoiler alert, she's alive. The sages later found the newly born Dendro oh, Archon and whisked her back to Sumeru. It's Lesser Lord Kusanelli's birthday. Kusanelli's birthday. Nilu's dance Lesser, with Subzerus uh, is about to one. begin. The most important performance at the Subzerus festival. The goddess of flowers began to dance. Countless beautiful party stars began to bloom wherever she stepped. Though we're just tiny people compared to the divine, we still have to do our best to make sure that the birthday girl feels loved on her special day. The stage is going to be even prettier when it's festival time. I can't wait for you to see it. Oh my god, that looks so cool. Trainee Forest Major Collie, reporting for duty. Hi! Fly! Oh, what the fuck is that? Oh, dude! Amber 2.0. The weathering has been recorded Denver, in Sumeru for millennia. It's said that it originates from the depths of the world. I'm afraid we rangers will be battling the withering zones here for a long time. Tiny. Many plants in the rainforest are already in decline. Yep. One with the forest. Let's nip that in the butt. It's called an Akasha Terminal. It's a tool produced by the Academia that utilizes the legacy of Greater Lord Ruka Devata. You may use an Akasha terminal to connect directly to the Akasha and access any knowledge you need. The Divine Knowledge Capsule should be up for a secret auction within the next few days. Use it, and you'll gain the wisdom of the gods. I need you to find someone, a traveling merchant. Uh, that's the cooler day, Ona. Oh my shit. words, our god shall return. All will suffer retribution together. What is happening right now? You all saw that just now? Nilu. The Grand Sage ordered us to stop the performance. What's, what Maybe kind of story is this? Lord Cusinelli's birth as confirmation of Greater Lord Rukadavata's death. Aren't you ashamed of pursuing such frivolous and meaningless activities in this land of knowledge and reason? This device? It's extracting energy from the ley line. It looks like he used the divine knowledge capsule. The sub Zeru's festival. Boss? Go celebrate the birth of that god. What's happening? Oh, come on! Our archon created the utopia of this new city for all scholars who sought validity, verity, and truth, while people like you wish to defile it. It would be too risky to continue the Subzeros Festival at this point. I don't want to get everyone in trouble. We don't have any more festivals to waste. Oh my god! Are you really so generous? Or are you just looking at complete denial? The world forgets. quick heads up so this whole special program i didn't talk too much because the devs are just talking so much that i can't fucking say anything and i have to focus on the caption below so i didn't have many reactions so i'm gonna do my reactions now instead i'm gonna do some of the highlights in this special program i'm not gonna cover everything but some of the things that shocked me the most first and foremost of course is we're going to talk about the backbone of the 3.0 version of genshin impact which is solely focused on sumeru it's finally gonna come so it's gonna be basically the biggest update in the game 
yet, at least in my opinion it is, since I only got to play this when Raiden Shogun got released. I don't know when that was, I'll just probably look it up later. Sumeru has not been disappointing yet. It's been amazing so far. The sceneries look really nice. There's flowers everywhere. There's life everywhere. So basically, they're succeeding in selling this new region. Next thing is that the Denjo element is finally going to be added to the game. Now we've seen a glimpse of the Denjo element, which is the Denjo and Pyro interaction. Now they're adding two more interactions. Now these two interactions are very unique, they're very complex. They're quite hard to understand on the first try, but maybe if you just try to play the game and interact with the elements there a little bit more, maybe you will get to understand it. But for now, it's kind of complicated. It doesn't bring much to the table when, in terms of other elements, I'm kind of underwhelmed. I was hoping that it would at least be able to interact with every single element, but this is only what we get. Next thing, the story quests and Archon quests look interesting. Now, the devs said that Tainari's story quest will actually be centered around the area that's wilting. I don't know what the area is called, I forgot. I hope that it definitely catches my interest because so far all the characters in Inazuma, all their story quests have been a miss because it's all about fucking politics. They didn't portray it in a very exciting way. I hope Tainari's is interesting. I hope it keeps me engaged. I hope it's not as long as the other ones. I don't care how long you make a story quest as long as it is interesting and not just filled with filler in order to extend the duration of it. I'd much prefer a shorter version of it as long as you keep the most action-packed sequences and most interesting scenes in the fucking story quest. Next one, Archon Quest. I'm the most that's probably the thing that I'm excited the most in 3.0 since it has it has a lot of arcs. I don't know what the story quest would be or what the Archon Quest would be be or what its plot would be. Well, we got the main idea that we're going to be celebrating Lesser Lord Kusanali's birthday, but that's about it. There's so many other pathways that they displayed here. I, I want to find out what they would be about. It's probably going to be in a span of until December. So they're gonna divide the stories into bits so that people wouldn't rush the Archon quest and finish it in one sitting. The artifacts. Now I didn't see the artifacts before on here because I couldn't pause it and they showed it for like 5 seconds only but they're presenting new artifacts as well as new forgeable weapons. So the new forgeable weapons, we haven't seen any stats about them yet. Okay, so update. Here are actually the forgeable weapons mentioned in the video. The video was made when 3.0 program was initially released. So now I'm making an update because they officially released what the stats would be on the new forgeable weapons. So first we got the King Squire Bow. It's an attack percent scaling for the first or the primary stat and it has base attack as a secondary stat 454 so i'm gonna say this out now so that we don't have to cover it up later again um almost all of these weapons are em scalers so that means that this will probably unlock a new meta it will make em much more useful in the future because it seems that uh, the dendro resonance is that if you have two dendro characters in your team then that would uh give a bonus em to your whole party that means that it will make em more useful in the future uh second weapon here we have Force Regalia Claymore. It's an ER weapon. It has 565 base attack and of course it again it has EM new essential stats. Basically all the weapons here are like that. You could check out uh, Hoyo Labs article here yourself. I won't go over into too, too much detail into each and every single one of them. Also you could check out Mtash. Basically he made a video about all of this stuff so I won't be covering any more of that. There's also new weapons for the weapon banners and I'm not interested in it, any of them. But the artifacts, let's go back to, the, to our main point. The artifacts look interesting. One of them is the Dendro set. I don't know how how much you will use this you can only i think you'd only utilize the dendro set on some dendro teams where a dendro dps would be the one who's going to hyper carry the other set though is em focused i don't know how this would play out it looks very complex there's a lot of words, there's a lot of interactions. I don't know if it's going to be good, if it's going to be bad. I can't comprehend it until we see the set itself. I ain't gonna farm it that much. If I get Tainari, I can just give him Wanderer's Troop since he is 
indeed a Dendroganyu, but singular target. By the way, I'm gonna pull for Tiny. I don't care what anyone else says. I don't care the people pressing the fact that he is going to be a standard banner character. Like, bro, I'm literally on endgame. I can fucking pull anyone who- anyone I want. If I fail, then I'm gonna pull for Ganyu. Alright, new events look really plain and boring. We just have to take pictures and... Uh, take pictures and... Oh yeah, there's one thing I'm excited about, that's the fucking fighting sequence here. The one event where you just fight until timer runs out, you have to fight waves and waves of uh, monsters. It's gonna put some, most of my characters to good use, especially my Raiden Miko team. It's so satisfying to clear waves of enemies using that combo team. It feels so satisfying to put all my characters and use them all at their full potential. They put new creatures here. Okay, so update on the new creatures. You have the official Genshin Impact post here. Sumeru Adventure Journal. So basically this contains all of the creatures that you can find in the region. First of them is the Fungi. I mean, you've seen one of them already in the chasm. Here are other of its classifications, basically other elements. There's evolved forms of them as well. We got the Eremites, which I basically can take of as Treasure Hoarders 2.0. They look like Treasure Hoarders. They're humans. You can fight them. They're thugs. We got new Ruin monsters here. The Ruin Drake Earth Guard and the Ruin Drake Skywatch. So this means this, this one is a ground-focused unit and this one flies. I don't know what they do yet. I haven't explored it myself. By the way, by the time I'm releasing this, Sumeru is probably already out. We got the Electro Regis Vine, which I presume is going to be finished in like 10 seconds maximum but i hope it's the other way around i hope it's more difficult than other the other regis vines well we got jade plume terror shroom this is the newest unique looking boss they added it's basically a huge chicken with many tails so they described in the video that it could be affected by the elements as well like pyro speaking of new creatures we got living beings we got the shaggy sumpter beast which is the Best one of them all, looks so fluffy, it looks the cutest out of all of them. We have Rich Boland Tiger, it's Red 13 that we saw from the preview that they dropped. We got a Spino Crocodile, it looks like a hybrid of a Spinosaurus and a Crocodile. Uh, we got a Shroom Boar, we also just saw this in the preview teaser, and it looks better than the normal boar. Normal boar looks plain and boring and brown. And we got new plants here, we got the Zaytun Peach, Padisara. Calpolata Lotus. There's more actually. There's more flowers when you actually log into the game. That basically covers everything. I forgot. One of the new events gives you Seelies. Seelie companions. I am actually genuinely looking forward to this one because I want myself a Seelie. I miss the events where you get some of them and I'm kind of bored of the paper doll, paper mache man that's riding behind me. And I want a new pet. So I'm gonna get the Dendrum Sealy, the green one. I'm really excited for it, but the way you get it, it's gonna be fucking boring again. The only hype that's left in this game is new characters. Speaking of new characters, Hoyoverse just drip marketed once again. They just released three new banners and some of them are confirmed they're going to arrive in 3.1 first of them is Sino. we've already seen him from the previous teaser and we've also already seen him from the initial release of the game since he was one of the characters that they officially released in the posters he is it's my surprise he's actually an electro user and it seems like he's a polar uh we have nilu or nilo or however you pronounce it we've already seen her in the trailer she's already been been previewed in the teasers she is the dancer basically and my take is that she probably there's a possibility she could be a sword user she just hides it well in her dress or maybe she could be a catalyst user and she's dendro oh not dendro i mean hydro so we have another hydro character here they're clearly releasing elements that would generally cooperate with dendro elements so that people would pull that for dendro more and we have candace here the newest one that hasn't been released anywhere at all she just came out of nowhere uh people say she's a four star she's also hydra and she has a shield so basically my take is that this is her ultimate this is probably gonna be her burst animation and she's gonna be uh a shielder here are the new banners zhongli rerun alongside tainary on phase one phase two 
Kokomi rerun and Ganyu. So the last thing I can think of is the strong box. Finally gonna fucking add many more artifacts in the strong box. Many more artifact sets. At least now you won't be able to suffer farming for a single domain and getting the wrong artifact. The artifact that you don't fucking need. Just maybe Sumeru and Dendro is the only are the only ones who are carrying this that's basically it inside the shell you see nothing else just sumeru and dendro after you fucking finish all of those you're back to doing nothing so it's kind of bleak the future is looking really barren i know i can still fucking do this because i'm just a casual player i don't grind the game every day for hours on end i just do the dailies do commissions use my resin that's basically it i log off but i really do feel bad for all the other players there that do grind this game that are hardcore people who play the game on a daily ba basis for hours I really hope that Hoyoverse does something about it. Cause if they don't, then that just shows how much they don't care about their community. Overall thoughts, overall rating for this, 8 out of 10. Just because it's Dendro and Sumeru, but if you remove that, it's probably gonna be a 4 out of 10. Thanks everybody for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe everyone.